I needed a place to put my drinks while watching TV, so I built a couch table. You want one too? So follow me and lass uns anfangen. One of the more difficult parts of any table build are to build the legs. So I picked a simple route and purchased pre-made metal legs. I found a pre-built C-shaped end table from Walmart for under $37. I will use this metal legs for the build. For the top I will use walnut scraps that I have left over from other projects and resin. The first step is to cut all the pieces to size. I'm using my table saw to do so. Once I cut all the pieces to the same thickness, I used my miter saw and attached a stop lock to it in order to cut all the pieces to the same length. Once you cut all the pieces to size, it's time to lay out a pattern that you'd like for the table. I wanted the table to curve around the C-shaped corner and cover part of it. Therefore, I chose to make the longest side of the table twice the size of the initial table. I used two pieces of wood to mark the length. Once you decided on the size, lay out a pattern before you start the glue up. This is the pattern I came up with. All the gaps will be filled in with resin. The glue up was a little complicated since I decided to leave gaps in between. I just try to glue up smaller pieces one at a time and then glue up those pieces once they have dried to form larger pieces. Like always, apply the glue, spread the glue and put the pieces together, tighten the clamps. Let the glue fully dry overnight. While the glue is drying, it's the perfect time to build a shape for the resin pour. I'm using the two pieces of lumber that I had used to lay out the pattern earlier. I'm attaching it to a form that I had built a while ago. I just used some lumber, covered it in tuck tape and attached to build a form. It's best to drill the pieces together. However, I like to reuse my forms and I did not want to drill holes in the middle of the form. So I chose to use silicone and some clamps to close up the form. Make sure the whole inside of the form is covered with tack tape. Nothing will leak out of this form. It's the next day now and the glue has fully dried. To get an even seal in the form, it's best to clean up all the dried wood glue. To do so, either use a chisel or use a sander with a rust sanding pad. And of course, I chose the sander. Alright, I think this will do. Let's take the pieces into the craft room to glue it into the form. Use some silicone and spread it along the edges. The silicone will keep the piece from floating in the resin and it will keep the resin in the right places. Use a regular caulk gun if you have. I just had the silicone tube on hand and it broke off on top so I had to use my fingers to spread it. Once you applied all the silicone, flip the piece and attach it to the bottom. Do the same with the other piece. I had a real blunt moment here. I could not figure out immediately what was the right position for this piece. Do things like that ever happen to you? In the end, at least I figured it out. Ta-da! All done. Now it's time to let it dry. It's the next day now and it's time for the resin pour. Like always, I'm using total board resin. Mix your resin according to manufacturer instructions. And now it's time to mix it up with a little resin dance.
For the pigment, I use black diamond in a white color and then once it's all mixed up, I pour the resin into the form. Don't forget, when you are using mica powder, the pigment will settle to the bottom and the metallic look will disappear if you don't stir it up throughout the drying process. Fill up the resin all the way to the top and over pour it a bit. Let the resin dry for a few days. This resin has fully dried, it's time to take it down to the workshop. To flatten the surface, I'm using my router sled and handheld router. Put on some protection gear and then start sliding the router sled over the piece to straighten the surface. After I cleaned up the mess I just made, I used my miter saw to straighten up the top side of the piece. The sides are straightened up with my table saw. The piece is nice and straight. Just before I start sanding, I'm using stub on adhesive to fill in some of the cracks. It dries within minutes and it's ready to sand. Let's have some fun! Next step, let's spray some water to raise the grain. In my opinion, it's not necessary when building furniture item, since you would be using a different finish than if you would make a cutting board for example, but I still like to do it, why not if you can? Let the water fully dry and then sand it one more time. This one is just going to be a quick sand with 320 grit. Okay, 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 I will spare you this one. Let's just fast forward. And it's nice and smooth. The next step is to cut the piece so we can fold it around the corner. To do so, we have to cut it at a 45 degree angle. Flip the other piece upside down and then cut the same 45 degree angle. And this is how the two pieces should fit together. To attach the legs, flip the piece upside down, protecting the surface with a towel. pre drill the holes and attach the top with screws. Be careful with your head there. The lower part of the metal legs doesn't have pre-drilled holes yet, so let's pre-drill some holes. To attach the lower piece, I chose to add a little bit of adhesive. It really is not necessary since the pieces will be attached with screws, but I added it anyways. It will fill in any tiny gaps there might be in the connection. And this fits together perfectly. Now it's time for the finish. This time I'm using Rubio Monocode. Apply it using the instructions.
and we are fertig. I would like to give a special thank you to everyone that is using the thank you button underneath the video. I really appreciate the support. It helps me to create more and more videos. Please like, comment and subscribe. Tschüss!